Continuing on with our project, today we're working on the power for our 486 tower conversion. As you can see, we're plugged into the wall here and then into the power supply, which should have sufficient power. Now we're testing the five volt leads and uh, we're getting five volts, that's great. Next, we'll test the 12 volt leads. The five volt leads are the red and the 12 volt leads are yellow. That's pretty standard on power supply. Unfortunately, we're only getting about 10.4 volts here. Thankfully, we have some more e-waste in the back. This, in this case, it's a Dell computer. Uh, first, I am grounding the green lead, which is the power on lead. And as you can see, we had five volts there. Now I'm checking the 12 volt line and we have 12.2 volts. That's good. The next step is we'll remove the power supply from the donor unit. That's gonna go back into the e-waste pile and uh, we'll finish disconnecting the cables here and now i'm going to measure the power supply the screw holes on the power supply since this case doesn't have a standard power supply like modern cases do we'll have to drill some holes after marking their relative positions lines up real nice now we'll just put the screws in And we'll test it one more time. So 12.2 volts on the 12 volt line there. That looks good. Okay, next. These are standard bus bars for a circuit breaker or fuse panel. And I thought these would be a great way to provide power to their single board computers. We have some nylon M3 spacers that we use a lot of times when we're building things here at Ameridroid. And uh, those will be great for insulating the bus bars from the case. We've got some M3 screws there and they'll fit nicely. That's an 18 millimeter M3 screw. And then we have a 12 millimeter M3 screw that go, will go in on the back side there. Now, if we didn't have those, we could use something like this wall plate, which was my initial idea. And we could put that inside the case and that would insulate those as well because it's plastic. Next I wanted to check that these screws will bottom all the way out so that they will make good contact with the pigtail power cords that we're going to be using. Next we'll mark the position of those spacers on the back of the case there and we will drill those out. Now we'll go ahead and mount those. I'm mounting the screws in from the backside and into those nylon spacers for the five volt and the 12 volt bus bars. And the ground bus bar can go straight to the case because cases are generally grounded. So we're using some M3 nuts there and I'm tightening with the Allen key from the other side. All right, so there we go, we've got Plenty of screw terminals now. All right, now I'm gonna replace my paperclip jumper with a device that's actually made to do this. As you can see, it's, it's just a simple connector that has that jumper wire placed in it, but that'll keep things from accidentally getting grounded or shorted. Next, I'm cutting and stripping the yellow wire for the 12 volt bus bar and then the black wire for ground that's the one remember that is connected directly to the case without the spacers and then finally the red wire which will provide the 5 volts to the 5 volt bar now we'll test it one more time and here I'm going from ground to 12 volts. And as you see, we have 12.2 volts, which is what we want. Now we're gonna take a standard tray like this, which is made for a five and a quarter inch bay, and we will be using it 
to mount our single board computers to. We could mount two Odroid C2 style or Pine 64 H 64s or whatever in that form factor, Asus Tinkerboards, Raspberry Pis, or an Odroid N2. So we could fit one Odroid N2 or four credit card sized single board computers in one five and a quarter inch slot. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.